Hey, everybody, and welcome to another segment of AstrologyAnswers.com's weekly forecast. My name is Terrence Scardino. The week begins on Monday, November the 20th, 2023, with the moon in Pisces. The moon sets the general public tone and reactions. Pisces is more sensitive, more compassionate, um, more healing spiritual energies for those who tap into it. But on Monday, the sun in Scorpio will be in harmony with Pluto, the planet that rules or is associated with Scorpio. That sun positive with Pluto is very favorable for probing the depths of your psyche. In other words, it's great for counseling, it's great for having an astrology reading, but also for doing a lot of research, investigation. On Tuesday, the moon continues in sensitive Pisces, but now Mars, assertive warrior, aggressive Mars, will be in harmony with Pluto. Um, this is very forceful energy, but, uh, but also very confident energies um, to really uh, go deep. Now, how this can play out on a mundane, everyday level in the positive is Pluto is breaking down and transforming. And Mars is this working, repairing, fixing. So it's a really favorable day to begin a construction project or home remodeling or making home repairs or any kind of repairs may be out in your backyard if you're so fortunate to have one. On Wednesday, the 22nd, the sun that's been in Scorpio the past four weeks is now in Sagittarius. Um, and Sagittarius and Scorpio is very different. Scorpio can really hide information, where Sagittarius tends to be honest and sometimes too honest and too blunt. Scorpio, it, that energy was more introspective, uh, more brooding, more dark. And now we're going into Sagittarius for the holidays and Sagittarius is adventurous, it's outgoing, it wants to travel, um, very much more uh, playful energies. Now, the sun goes into Sagittarius about 6 a.m. Pacific time, um, and they'll be there, as I said, for four weeks. The moon will also have shifted out of watery, sensitive Pisces, and goes into fiery, assertive, ambitious Aries. Aries and Sagittarius are both fire signs. They're very compatible. So on Wednesday, the sun goes into zero degrees of Sagittarius. It goes about one degree per day. So all day, the sun will be at zero degrees of Sagittarius. Well, around 9.20 a.m. Pacific time, the moon, the emotional moon, goes into fiery Aries in harmony for those next hour to two hours after 9.20 a.m. Pacific time with the sun. When the moon and the sun are in harmony, there's more of an ease. Um, there's more, things fall more into place. There's, it's more sociable, but all in fire. So that's much more motivation and energy and passions. Thursday, the moon continues in assertive, uh, courageous Aries. Mid-afternoon, it's going to be in opposition or tension with social Venus. And so both of these planets are very favorable for bonding and relationships, but when they're at, when they're clashing, which will only be for an hour to mid-afternoon Pacific time, it's just that you may be you may be feeling like you're not on the same page, that um, you're not getting your needs met 
from the other person. Plus the first half of the day, Pacific time, the sun in Sag is now squaring a 90 degree angle of internal conflict with restricted Saturn. So the first half of the day, you may be feeling more um, cautious, more worried, more frustrated. Um, but as we get closer to noon, this starts to dissipate. Um, but then you have to deal with perhaps some uh, being off track with personal relationships mid-afternoon. On Friday, now warrior assertive courageous Mars that's been in Scorpio for about six weeks is now entering into Sagittarius. Um, Mars goes into Sagittarius once every two years and it's going to be joining the sun in Sagittarius. So we're coming out of the sun and Mars in Scorpio, which can be more private, brooding, secretive energies. Now we're going into Mars in Sag, joining the sun in Sag, and there's more of this extroverted energies, more of this, um, uh, this dynamic, this is energies very favorable for physical activities, for sports, recreational activities. But all that Sagittarius is, um, is, is this more outgoing into the light, um, being more transparent, whereas the Scorpio, more hidden, more brooding. Now, that Mars in Sagittarius, beginning on November the 24th, will remain in Sagittarius until January the 4th, 2024. So that background energy of Mars and Sagittarius is taking risks. It's, it's being much more enthusiastic. It's much more excited, passionate energies. The moon continues on Friday um, in at fiery Aries, but it's going to go void of course because it's about ready to change signs 9.40 a.m. Pacific time to 12.29 p.m. Pacific time. And again, when the moon is void, of course, it's changing signs, but it's no longer making any aspects to other planets, so there's no activity. The energy is flat. It's unproductive. It's good for staying the course, keeping to your routine, maybe resting, reflecting, but it's never advised to launch important new projects when the moon is void, of course. Then the moon leaves Aries, fiery Aries, and goes into earthy Taurus at 12.29 p.m. Pacific time. Taurus is more grounding, more steady, very different from the Aries. When the moon was in Aries, more impatient, more aggressive, now, when the moon goes into Taurus at 12.29 p.m. Pacific time, by 2 to 3 p.m. Pacific time, the Taurus steady, uh, the moon and steady Taurus calming Taurus will be in harmony with Saturn. When Saturn is favorably aspected, Saturn gives a sense of groundedness, security, so that moon Saturn in the afternoon Pacific time, very favorable for business, very favorable for starting long range projects. But certainly emotionally, you're going to be feeling more steady and more grounded. On Saturday, as the moon continues in Taurus, the um, Mars in Sag, is now going to be blocked or be frustrated by Saturn. Mars is forming a square, a 90 degree angle to Saturn. That can, Saturn can inhibit and block and frustrate all your energies. Mars, Saturn can trigger um, frustrations, hitting a wall, um, could trigger anger, 
But since it's all kind of con contracted and repressed because of the Saturn, when Mars is contained, and it can often trigger um, from exhaustion to depression. Um, but fortunately, the moon is in Taurus, so it's helping us just do it, you know, a, a step at a time, keeping it steady, keeping it grounded. The positive you can do with this Mars in Saturn, which doesn't happen very often, is to focus on a, a task, a project, and, um, a, you know, and go after it on a very slow and steady approach to get that energy flowing in a more productive way. Sunday, the 26th, the moon will, um, continuing in steady Taurus, but it's going to go void, of course, 1.52 p.m. to 4.40 p.m. Pacific time. Again, just reflect, just rest, don't introduce anything important new. At 4.40 p.m., the moon goes into Gemini. Taurus is stubborn, it's slow, it's solid. When the moon's in Gemini, and this is more of the public reactions, Gemini is restless, um, it's adaptable, it's jumping from one idea to the next. Um, there's a lot of curiosity um, and a lot of just Again, a lot of restlessness. But when the moon goes into Gemini at 4.40 p.m. Pacific time, it's going to start being blocked by Saturn around 6, 7 p.m. Pacific time. And that could be hitting a wall. Maybe after the weekend, you just want to, you know, retire early, rest. Um, and you just... Um, may be really worried at time of taking on and be worried about many responsibilities, but it's in the evening Pacific time. And on the East Coast of the United States, certainly into Europe, most of you are going to be sleeping. Um, so you don't have to worry about that moon Saturn that can uh, often trigger too much worrying. So, I want to thank you for tuning in. I hope to see you next week with my next segment. Until then, be safe and well.